And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C. Show. Glad you could join us. Don't forget about uh, our website, www.billycboxing.com. And, uh, of course, don't forget about my book, Tom Molino, From Bondage to Baddest Man on a Planet. It's available right now, and you can actually get it on our website. If you're looking to get a signed copy, just visit billycboxing.com and go into the book club section. Or if you don't care about a signed copy, hey, just go up to amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com and get yourself a copy today. It's good for everyone, not just boxing fans. It's a great story of a freed slave who uh, became the most recognized uh, figure in sports 200 years ago. So check it out and find out why I'm so uh, uh, adamant about uh, getting this guy uh, the recognition he deserves. Tom Molino from Bondage to Baddest Man on the Planet. Uh, listen, recently I was uh, down in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida doing a, an event. And uh, on the way back uh, due to a uh, snowstorm, I conveniently made sure I got stuck in St. Simon's Island. Why, you ask? Well, because I knew of a place that makes uh, some fantabulous food. Sal's Neighborhood Pizzeria, uh, Restaurante Italiano. And uh, I tell you guys, uh, if you don't believe me, check it out, www.salsneighborhoodpizzeria.com or give my man Sal a call, 912-268-2328. The best pizza, but way beyond that, I had some veal marsala that was to die for. So for me, hanging out for a couple extra days wasn't that bad. And speaking of Sal, he joins me right now. Sal, Rocky Senecola, how the hell are you, my man? Hey, Bill. Bill, I'm so glad to be on the show to talk with you and your fans and it's great, man. I'm doing great. How are you this day? Oh, I'm uh, I'm doing uh, I'm doing better. I'm doing uh, much better. It's uh, it's cold up here, but uh, hey, you know uh, I I got your food on my mind. I, I can't help it. I get you on the phone. I think of it about more. But uh, while I was down there, we both got to uh, uh, watch some great fights, and uh, we were chatting uh, in between the fights and and giving our thoughts. And I, I wanted you to uh, express your feelings on these three fights that number one were on network television, which. I know you were pretty psyched about. Before we get into the fights, uh, I know we talked a little about that. But what is what is having professional boxing at you know the level that we saw this past weekend on network television? What do you think that does uh, from a positivity standpoint uh, in the sport of boxing for the sport of boxing? I think it is a direct catalyst to bring fights, world class fights, into the living rooms again. I think it will be such a presence that people will talk about it. People will conveniently dial their channels and see professional boxing at a top world-class level, and they will remember the names of the fighters. They will remember the fighting style. They will have it exposed right at their convenience instead of going through... You know, I was in sales for many years. People go through the path of least resistance. That's the number one thing. And when you put up obstacles, make it a little more difficult for the average person to click on a channel and watch TV. It makes it a little bit more of a limited audience. Well, you bring it to the majority of the households in the United States of America, well, you're going to see people are going to gravitate and re rekindle their love affair with boxing because it's just naturally what we do. We, we, we love to see combatants. We love to see it. So, yeah, Bill, I was all for it, and I'm all for it. You know, three million uh, views they had. They had uh, three hundred three three million uh, views watching uh, uh, that uh, event that we saw uh, on Fox. And um, I, I tell you, you make a great point about learning uh, about the fighters and stuff. But you know, it's like what I say too, and uh, with small club shows. You know, it really even if even if the fans, although all three of these fights had recognizable names on them, at least for boxing fans. Um, even if if a if a new fan or or a uh, a fan that used to be a fan is coming back and they flip the tube on and and they stumble across uh, uh, pro boxing on network television, even if they don't remember the name Sal, as long as it's a good fight and they say to themselves, "Oh man, I I saw this fight the other day on on, on Fox or CBS or NBC or whatever." And I don't know who these two guys were, but what an entertaining fight. I mean, doesn't that have some value in itself as well so that they recognize that, hey, I'm going to keep an eye out for fights on, on TV now? It does. You feed the fire, you build a fire. And you know what? You pump that into the living rooms on a regular basis. It's more than just water cooler talk. It's something that people gravitate. There is still the allure and there is still the romanticism with boxing on all levels. 
and you put it in the, the availability of the household to have it on the channels and clicking while they're surfing the web or surfing the, 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 the TV, they're going to stop. They're going to see. And there's going to be something that catches their eye. I don't care if they, they admit it or not. It just naturally is something that your eyes catch and you want to learn about more. And, yeah, I think it's, I think it's fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, uh, I, especially when I'm flipping through the channels and it's at that time when the ring card girl is walking around. It definitely captivates me. But uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, Sammy Vasquez, the Who Can Mexican against Aaron Martinez, was an entertaining fight. It was going one way. Uh, and then uh, Aaron Martinez uh, quit on his stool because of an elbow injury. What was your thoughts on that fight, how it was going, and then, of course, the, uh, uh, the, at the point of the stoppage? Well, you know, I, I saw the Vasquez Martinez fight, and I liked it very much. I thought it was one of the more entertaining fights. Uh, it, it was a great fight, as a matter of fact. And you saw, you know, Vasquez seemed to be, you know, it's so funny, Bill. Two out of three fights we saw, he had two southpaws that night. And Vasquez was the southpaw. And he was a pretty good, aggressive fighter. Uh, and he did some good counter punching, and he was picking his shots. He looked like he had some good boxing abilities with some good pop behind his punch. And I, I liked uh, Martinez. He was also in the fight, throughout the fight. And uh, for whatever reason, he just stayed on his stool. Uh, it was a shame to see a fight end like that. I, I don't like to see anybody quit. We're not going to go back to where we, the, the origin of boxing and what it is to fight. But, you know, yeah, I thought it was a great fight. And it looked like a, a good fight. I was actually, I, I did look at where I had some made some notes. And I thought Vasquez was uh, was a little more effective being aggressive and having the stop plus stance. So I, I, I had him slightly ahead at that time when, when Martinez quit, stayed on the stool. Yeah, he was winning the fight, you know, but the thing about Aaron yeah. Martinez was that Aaron Martinez generally is a warrior. Um, he beat Devon Alexander. Devon Alexander was... Uh, supposed to, you know, have, get a W against Aaron Martinez, and that's what actually uh, set up the fight with uh, uh, Vasquez. And for me to see him quit, I, I know he had an elbow injury. Uh, they they said it was an elbow injury. Um, I, you know, obviously uh, um, it must have uh, bothered him enough for him to to uh, stay on his stool. But you know, when 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 you have an opportunity like that. Um, and who am I to say? I, I, you know, I obviously didn't suffer uh, the injury, but when, when you have that opportunity, I mean, in my opinion, at least, Sal, I, if there was no way for him to continue, then the only thing he could do is is do what he did. But if there was any even little bit, shouldn't he have gone out there and tried to 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 do something? Or do you think he just felt that he didn't have a chance at that point in the fight? Well, there you go again, because you know what. I'm from that old school, as you know, Billy. And as long as you are able to get on your feet, let the referee stop the fight when he sees you cannot offer an offense. I mean, I'm not going to go back with my last fight two and a half years ago, but I was a lame duck. I fought with one arm, basically. And and what happened was we had to, to make the fight go on and continue. Now, Vasquez and, and Martinez, Martinez could have gotten off the stool. He could have moved around the ring. He could have done whatever he could have done to, to offer uh, any kind of offense with a jab or whatever, or his right hand, or, or he could have made an effort. Is what I'm saying, I don't, I don't believe fighters, as you say, who stay on the stool and quit right there. Uh, it, it, it should never, it should never be something that we witness. That's why they call it fighting. That's why they call it boxing. You get off the stool, you fight, and you fight to win. And if you're unable to do so. Let the referee stop the fight. Don't quit unless you think you're going to die. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I know, I, I know, I know. That's that's what. Uh, <laughs> that's what, my mentality. That's no, my mentality. I, I, and and I guess the the young whippersnappers of today don't have that mentality. But uh, in the heavyweight fight, which was an extremely entertaining fight until the stoppage, Dominic Brazil, who's uh, uh, an up and coming uh, young fighter, and he's taken on Amir Mansour. Amir Mansour is a uh, a, a, a fighter that you know did some time in the joint and uh, came out and started uh, re resurrected his boxing career and he's a little older and uh, I thought he was g giving Brazil everything he could handle he had him down he was uh, pummeling him and all of a sudden the fight ends uh, on the stool again what was your thoughts on that fight 
you know, it was funny. And, and, you know, Heather, we had Heather and I were watching that fight. And, and, and my, my staff is getting into boxing big time. In fact, the first thing they said is, when's Billy coming back? We're going to do another fight. Well, we were watching. Heather and I were watching the fight. And Mansoor was, was, was going gangbusters. He was aggressive. He was throwing bombs. He was throwing the haymakers from down by his ankles. And I said to Heather, I said, you know what? This guy, Brazil, he's going to be smart. He's going to take his time. He's going to back up. He's going to land a shot. He's going to make some difference here. And he did at point. And I thought Mansoor was, was, was either going to get caught and get, get stopped, or he was, unfortunately, he quit too. Uh, it was a good fight. It was the heavyweight, and they were active. They were looking to throw some good leather. And, uh, but Brazil, at least he had a little bit of a, a, a take on the fight. I think he's step back, I think he assessed, and he weathered the storm that Mansoor was, was trying to bring to him, and uh, for whatever, uh, to fruition, uh, you know, he just, he just uh, quit and said, hey, that's it, and, uh, but it was a good fight for a couple rounds there, but I thought Brazil might have, might have been able to pull it out by being patient, picking the shots, because he was a little bit more of the heavier puncher, uh, at times I thought he was going to deliver a big shot. The one thing I noticed about Emil Mansour is that he was willing to take the chance. You know, he fought inside. He was obviously fighting a guy that uh, had almost a foot or at least uh, seven inches uh, in height, and he just it looked like looked like just two. It looked like a, a high school kid beating up a, a grammar school kid. I mean, it was that the size difference was that uh, that uh, pronounced. But um, you know, I, I think Brazil showed a lot of heart. I think Emil Mansour uh, just ran out of gas. And and I think yeah. that he showed hard as well by willing to 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 take the shot to to land the shot and it was successful. He was winning on my scorecard. He was winning every round up until the stoppage. Do you think that the size difference? Uh, I mean, you know, you you and I are not exactly tall people, and and you know, in the ring, if you have two guys that are equally talented in terms of their you know boxing ability. The bigger guy generally wins. I mean, is is it an uphill battle when you're giving up so much in in size, not only height wise, but arm reach and weight, and I mean, just the whole picture. I mean, wh what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, again, I, I I give my little biased opinion because I was always a smaller fighter than my opponents. I always had the shorter reach or distance and and, and stature, but you know, I, I used it to my advantage. I moved my head. I became a harder target for people to answer to and to, to try and hit. And I knew if I get inside, I could buzz them like a ripsaw or something like that. And, you know, to Mansoor's credit, that's what he was doing. He was throwing the haymakers, but he knew, and he was willing to take the shot to land the shot. And that's, of course, you know, if you're getting hit, you're in a position to, to hit back. So he, he did a great job. I, I, I thought he would uh, try to sustain a little bit more level of that arsenal and, and keep going forward. But as you said, you know, there's only so much he could offer for so long. And Brazil uh, uh, just just waited his time, and, and, you know, he threw some heavy shots himself. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like this style. And to, to me, I'm going to say I think a bigger guy on some level will have an advantage. But also the little guy, if he knows how to use his asset, and knows how to use the ring, and knows the ring generalship, knows how to move, knows how to slip punches, knows how to counter. I think he could be at an advantage, too. It's just predicated on what each person brings and who's honed in on their crap to fight the style they're fighting. I always had trouble with guys shorter than me. That was very rare, but but they knew how to fight guys bigger than them, you know, because not too many guys were smaller than I was. Yeah, no, I, I could see that. You know, you become proficient uh, fighting, you know, the, the, the majority of your opponents, you know, and you, you just you get better and better the more you, you fight. One other thing I want to ask you about that particular fight Amir Mansour quit in it on his stool, and uh, you know uh, a couple of reasons. One, he he uh, had some jaw damage from that last shot that he took uh, just before the end of the round, and more importantly, uh, he bit through his tongue, uh, which uh, he couldn't close his jaw, and and he was bleeding. Uh, he ended up with thirty something stitches in his on his tongue. That's how severe the cut was. So obviously, especially seeing the type of fighter he was and the amount of heart that he displayed, that he, this man just couldn't go on anymore. I, I don't, I don't call that, uh, you know, uh, and I don't mean to to say it bluntly, but a bitch move. I I, I don't call that at all. I, I see the guy just knew that he couldn't continue, but his corner reacted 
in an unfavorable way, like they were disappointed, they were mad, you know, oh, you got to continue, stuff like that. When do you draw the line, Sal? You know, as a former pro fighter, I mean, when do you draw the line? Like you said earlier, you know, you don't want somebody to get killed over it. And, and where is the line drawn? You know, is each fighter, do they have their maximum tolerance level that they can handle? Is it, is it you know, is there an r- unwritten rule? I mean, how should we look at that? Billy, that's a that's a whole that you're opening up there because I I got some some words to say and you know there was a great fighter in Irvington, New Jersey. We fought on the same shows. His name was James Hard Rock Green, and he made some noise in the in the junior middleweight division coming up. But every time he got cut or saw blood, he went to a, a panic mode and and folded, and that was it. Now, man, Sore certainly had more of a reason uh, for just seeing a little blood. Tasting it is one thing too. And having a having the uh, the condition he did, but you know I I again you know you look at the old oh gosh I hate to go back but Muhammad Ali what with a broken jaw it's Kenny Norton and and all these other fighters you know again the prize has to be worth the price and you know do you, if you're physically able to do you get off the stool and do you do you uh, you know is the prize worth the price to get off the stool and. Should the corner have made a better assessment and say, hey, guess what? You know, your jaw's broken, you're flapping through your tongue and all this stuff. I don't think you can go out there. Uh, I think it could have been it could have been more of a, 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 a communication with the corner. Maybe he could have relayed what he's unable to do. But, you know, again, maybe I would go out there and let the referee see what's going on and stuff. I, I don't know. I, I'm not telling you to swallow blood or this and that, but um, I think the referee coming over to the corner could assess and, and, and ask the fighter, do you want to go on? Can you go on? Now, like I said, I can't say what well, individual what's in his heart. I get off the damn stool and go bite my other, my tongue off. This way I have a hard time interviewing after the fight. But the damn thing is that, no, I'm teasing, Billy. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a tough question. I think they should have asked them. The referee should ask, are you unable to fight? Can you fight? And, uh, you know, if the referee saw something beyond a uh, reasonable doubt that you'd say, hey, guess what, pal, you're staying on your stool, I'm not going to let this continue, then I think that would have been a good move for everybody all around. But uh, for for the corner not to communicate and support with the fighter and the fighter not listening to the corner, there's definitely some miscommunication, some different goals or different agendas there in that corner. Yeah, it's it sounds like the, the corner was a little too tough for their fighter, you know, and... Uh, uh, they weren't yeah. the ones with the broke, you know, with the with the bit through tongue that took no. thirty stitches. I mean, I had just recently bit my tongue uh, uh, when I was eating a sandwich on my way home from from your, you know. From, I thought you were say when you were biting a pizza. I was gonna no, say, no, no, you didn't. No, 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 definitely not there. But on the way home, you know, I was eating a sandwich. I bit my tongue. And let me tell you, I didn't need stitches and nothing like that. But it's the most painful thing, man. And it's happened a couple of times. So I, I don't know. I, I got to be a little sympathetic. Um, and and uh, one thing, you make a great point. Some fighters just can't fight when they see blood. Manny Pacquiao is like that. You know, when he uh, when he sees his own blood, he, he becomes a different fighter. You know, they just... You know, and then you got guys like Boom Boom Mancini and some guy named Sal Rocky Senecola that, you know, they see their own blood. They don't care, you know, but uh, uh, anyway. Wait, I expected. I was the fight. I, 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 when I got out of a fight, if, if I didn't see my own blood, I said, what happened? And, <laughs> hey, listen, I heard, I I, I heard that with all the stitches you've had in your head, you could line them all up and it can go from New York to California and back. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's you. But anyway, the, the main that's event. the next Guinness Book of World Records I'm going to bring. <laughs> the, next, the, uh, the main event on that night was uh, Danny Garcia against Robert Gus Guerrero. And that was an extremely entertaining fight. In, in my opinion, Sal, I saw a tale of two fighters. Danny Garcia in the first half of the fight. Uh, I thought Robert Gus Guerrero was winning. And then all of a sudden, Danny Garcia comes out in the second half of the fight. Like, you know, all of a sudden, Garcia couldn't hit him. Uh, his hand speed was there. His accuracy was there. Uh, it was a great fight. Why wait? Why, why, why wait for half the fight to be over before you, you start uh, doing y- your full capabilities? That, again, you know, when you're looking at a fight, some fighters think more than they do than, rather than just react. And that's okay. When you're looking at a 12-round fight, round fight, depending on how you're going to do it, how much strategy you're going to do, what, what do you assess you're going to do? Is this fight going to go to distance? 
Do you feel better? Do you feel like you're not conditioned for 12 rounds? Or this guy is going to impress me for 12 rounds. Should I hold back a little bit and, and carry him in the late rounds when he's wearing out? Um, it all started with the old rope of dope back in the uh, 70s with, with, with Ali and, and Foreman. But the bottom line is, you know, I, I saw it was a great fight. Let me tell you something. These guys, they were a main event for a reason. They, they fought a good fight. And Garcia... Uh, he won the fight. It was a unanimous decision. I think the judges had it, uh, all 116 to 112. Uh, Guerrero, another southpaw. He was the aggressor throughout the fight. He was aggressive. He came towards Garcia. He looked like he was effective, like you said early on, and he was coming at him. And Garcia, I think, was maybe trying to assess and, and, and do his counter punching and maybe see if he's going to tire out Guerrero and what's going to happen. They were both. They were both good fighters. I, I, I really, really liked that fight. That was a world class fight. And uh, finally, Sal, uh, uh, this weekend we got a rematch of uh, uh, oh. of a fight that took place uh, last year. Uh, Jean Pascal uh, got knocked out by Sergey Kovalev in the first meeting. Took place up in Canada. Well, the rematch is taking uh, place up in Canada. Sergey Kovalev is uh, a light heavyweight that many regard, including myself, as the best light heavyweight in the world today. Uh, Jean Pascal, uh, since the last fight, is now working with Freddie Roach. Um, how do you see this fight going? Do you see a different outcome? Do you see the same outcome? Uh, what's your thoughts on this one coming up? I saw that first fight, and I, I throughout that fight, I just thought that Sergey was, was, was a stronger fighter, a little bigger, and not, not to get back on the old subject earlier, a bigger fighter versus a smaller fighter. He just looked like he was more of the fighter there to present, uh, have a larger presence and to dominate and, and, and want to dominate and want to win. John Pascal is a very good fighter. He's got, a, he's got a great history, great record. But I'm going to tell you this. I could tell you two fights that I would See, nine, and not be a hypocrite because I always say any given fighter could be beaten any given night. But I will tell you this if we see nine fights between Sergey Kovalev and Jean Pascal, nine of those fights are going to go towards Sergey Kovalev. So I think it's going to be pretty much a repeat, and Sergey is going to win this fight. Uh, I, I, that's, that's what I feel. I also feel that same way if Pacquiao ever fights Mayweather again, which I hope they don't. But I see Mayweather. As much as I don't want to say it, I see Mayweather beat Pacquiao nine out of ten fights. I think we will see, if 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 Pacquiao beats Bradley in April. Uh, I think we will yeah. see it. I predicted it at your place after the fight. You know, so you uh, did. so you and, did. and and and, you and gave listen, it Taylor. Yeah. The, the thing is, is it's the biggest money fight for both guys, and we all know Floyd's about making as much money as he can, so there's no other fighter out there. We're not, I'm not saying there's better fights for Floyd, because there is. The winner no. of Porter, Thurman, uh, uh, maybe Kell Brook, uh, you know, uh, there's so many other fights, maybe even Danny Garcia. There's so many other great fights that I'm sure a lot of fans would like to see Floyd in, but when at the end of the day, the most money he can make is a rematch with, uh, with Manny, there's no question. Um, Sal, I, I appreciate your time. Now, now I guess you're going to go back and tell everybody that my weekly show is complete because uh, Sal Rocky said a cola. Sal Rocky said, "I'll tell all my listeners." You know, uh, here we are. You know, Sal's uh, treating me to some food. I'm, 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 I'm getting stuffed, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting with all his staff who I love, Heather and my man Max, and all the rest of the uh, uh, people there, Kelly, and. Uh, you know, I, next thing I know, Sal's talking to a table of cut, and he says, "Yeah, this is Billy C. He's got a weekly boxing show." So I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, wait a minute! It's it's on five days a week." Not Sal thought it was all about him because it was on one day a week, right, Sal? I mean, come on, you got to admit. You know, well, exactly. I was throwing pizza. I was I was I was doing my Sal thing, singing, dancing, telling stories, throwing pies. And you're there at the bar with a full bar, and and, and I felt proud. I said, "Here is the world famous Billy C." Here, he just wrote his first book, and he, he he's working on a couple of other projects. Hint, hint later, and um, <laughs> here we have him sitting at my bar, eating some beautiful food, and we're talking boxing. And I, I announced to everybody, I said, "This is the world famous Billy C. He's got a great fan base, and this and that, and, and he has a weekly show." <laughs> and Billy's jaw dropped. 
I said, well, I mean, he's got a daily show. Yeah. I'm on a weekly segment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Thank it, you for the correction. <laughs> it, it, it's like this. In your place, you got to do what you do, right? I, I, I shouldn't have said hey. anything. You could have went over to Max and go, that's it. Cut him off. No more pizza for him, you know? But uh, I didn't want to <laughs> take that risk, you know? So, uh, but anyway, Sal, uh, as always, uh, a great time. I appreciate your insight. and We look forward to next week, my man. Hey, man, I do the same. I can't wait to see this fight this weekend, a rematch, and uh, we'll see if my words were true. And I want to thank you again, Billy, for having me on. I love this little segment, and I also love your fans. Because you know what? Your fans are the world's best. These guys are smart. They're educated. They know the fight game, and they're passionate about the fight game, just like we are. And that's why they're such great fans and, and, and loyal fans. So I appreciate any moment I have to, to be a part of your fantastic show, and I thank you for your daily radio show at least five days a week. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sal, until <laughs> next time, my man, uh, we'll talk to you soon, all right? God bless you, pal. Thank you. All right, take care. That's my Love man Sal Rocky Senecola uh, calling us live from uh, Sal's uh, Neighborhood Pizzeria. Check it out, www.salsneighborhoodpizzeria.com, or give my man a call, 912-268-2328, 912-268-2328. Make sure uh, you say hello to my girl Heather and Max and Kelly and all the rest of the beautiful staff that's uh, at Sal's place. Hey, 